In this video, we are going to talk about detail panel in Camero. Last week, I talked about color mixer, which was step ahead because the color mixer is something we tend to use much more often, but detail does hold some powerful features that allow you to fix the image. And this will be perfect example. So when I look from the distance, I can't see anything, but when I zoom in, I can see a lot of color noise over here. So this is where I'm going to start. I'm going to start from the very bottom with this color noise reduction. Simply color noise reduction allow you to reduce this sort of noise that would appear in the color. It can appear um, in the high contrast area exposed to the light where it cannot read the color properly. So I hope these three sliders, color noise reduction, detail and smoothness will help me to solve the issue. So now it's rather a small value and detail and smoothness is universal. So I will try to go up with color noise reduction and see if something happening. I go to 100 and nothing is happening. So I believe uh, the answer could be in this other slider. Let's uh, decrease the detail and we'll see if uh, decreasing the detail will help with something. Not so much just yet. So I believe the issue might be with smoothness. It doesn't read the smoothness yet. So I'm trying to increase the smoothness of this. And as you can see, as I go to 100, I pretty much solved all of the problem here. It's huge difference at this moment. This is before and this is after. So I had to increase the smoothness to actually make this effect visible. It's not always the case. It depends on the color noise that we have and how the Adobe software will be able to find this color noise and read it. As you can see now, it was on, only able to do it as we increased the smoothness to 100%. If we will not uh, add the smoothness, as you can see, we will bring back all of the details to it and we will not have the smooth transition. So that often could be the case. I wonder if we can do a little bit more by decreasing the detail. And we can do some more, but I don't want to decrease the detail fully. So I, I can deal with some of the color noise that I have here. But of course, I need to pay attention to the rest of the image. If these sliders, this correction didn't affect um, the other part of the images, because in some parts where we have some color distortion, uh, we could affect other parts. And these parts uh, could be unwanted, could be, we could want them to be as they are and not necessarily change it. Then above that, we have another slider, which is noise reduction. And on this image, I won't be able to show it uh, because as you know, uh, the color noise could be a little bit confusing, but when it comes to the noise, it rather should be easy to understand. And I can tell you when the noise appear on the image and how you can correct this. So if you have image that was in the low light condition and you had high value of ISO on your camera, you will have some noise. And I wouldn't recommend to removing all of the existing noise, but with this noise reduction, you can go up and you can reduce this noise that is on the image. Of course, if we should film, this is not something we would like to use because we will destroy the natural grain that we have. And then with this other slider, we can also work out if we lost some details and at the end we can bring back some detail and also contrast of these uh, areas. So these sliders will help us to reduce the noise. As we're working on this image, they don't really have uh, the noise, but let me jump to some other image and quickly show you how this could work. So as you can see, I moved to another image. Let's zoom in. And this image at the start was uh, very dark. As I brought up some of the light, as you can see, I got some of the noise and I don't necessarily want it. I want this uh, to look smooth, but also natural. So 
I'm going up with the noise reduction and as I go up, as you can see, I slowly remove the noise that is here. This is before and this is after. But also I might be losing some detail, so I will try to go up some detail and some contrast because I might also be losing some contrast. So I'm trying to find the right balance between noise reduction um, between losing details and losing the contrast. And now, as you can see, I fix this a little bit and it looks a little bit better. So now uh, let's go back to the previous example. The last thing that we have in the panel detail is sharpening. Being honest with you, it's not something I like to use, especially at this point, because later on I might uh, retouch the image in Photoshop. So I don't want to sharpen image because it might make my retouching difficult even though if i don't plan retouching this is not something i would do now because i don't know the final outcome of the image so i would sharpen image when i know everything else is already done but i'm going to tell you a few words on how it works so the first sharpening is just the value of sharpening we want to add so if we add the sharpening at 150 we add the maximum value that is available here for sharpening. And in fact, we did image um, very sharpen. The below radius, it shows you around how uh, big areas you want to build up the sharpening, around how many pixels. So the value is one. I don't want to send, say one pixel because I don't know if it's exactly one pixel, but this is rather small area. And you can see it built up the sharpening around this small tiny hair. If we go down to zero, it pretty much, uh, it won't build not to zero, but 0 0.5 is minimum. It's building the sharpening around these really, really tiny areas at this stage. So it can only catch the very small pixels and build up the sharpening around these areas. If we increase the radius, we increase the radius around which the sharpening is built. So the sharpening will be harsher in this case. Uh, also, uh, we will have, of course, uh, detail. We can increase the detail here or decrease similar as before. I believe it was 30 as the default, 25. And below that, we have also masking. And masking can be especially helpful if we don't want to affect uh, all of the image. So for example, we want to affect only the person with our sharpening. So then we can mask the image and see how the masking works. Increase the masking and I'm going to press option and automatically you can see how the masking works. So I'm going to decrease this. And as you can see, now I'm not affecting that much of the background, but just these areas around the skin. So this is how it works. As I said before, for sure, I wouldn't add such a strong contrast to this image. Um, sorry, not contrast, but such a strong uh, sharpening. And in fact, I'm not going to add any sharpening at this stage. I might do this at the very end, but at this moment, I want to keep everything as it was, but at least you know how does it work. Thank you for watching and next video on camera next week. And if you want to know more, check the links in the description, check my educational page where I share retouching courses, check my portfolio if you want to know uh, what I do in a few days. Also tutorial on the other subject than camera. And as I said, next week, another camera video. So thank you and see you next time.